so we have to draw the plan view so because we're doing a half pattern we're only going to draw half of the top view So as you can see here, her hole is right on the very edge. So then we break that up into the section to get our fold lines. So using the radius on our quarter marks, we scribe on each section, which then breaks them up gives us our point for our fold lines. You can increase the amount of sections and amount of fold lines it will give you less of a 50p effect on the actual cylinder section. So we mark all our fold lines in our half plan view drawing. So now we need to do our plot graph to get our true length lines of all our folds. So horizontal line and a vertical line. So we use that, so this is the top point, so that is the actual height of our finished transformer. So what we're going to use is we're going to use triangulation method to give us the true length of each one of those fold lines. So we mark up our pattern, number it so we don't get confused with the lines, which one's which. So because we have the view looking down, we know the distance of the plan view looking down on it for each one of those fold lines. So we use that, so that's the distance out looking down, and we mark that on our graph. So we know the height, and we know the distance looking down. So the distance from that point to our top height point is the true length line of that fold. So we need to plot. Because all of these lines are different, we have to plot every single one, because they're all different lengths. As with a concentric one, some lines are the same. So we double them up. Because these are all different, we have to do every single one.
So now with all of those complete, the distance from this point to the actual height of the transformer is the true length line of that fold. So all of these points we are then going to use to create our pattern. So now we move on to actually drawing our pattern. So horizontal line. So we start with the full length of one side, which we know. That gives us our points B and A. So we're going to start in the center. So we need to find B4 and A4. So we will use the true length lines of each one of those where they intersect will give us our point four. So we set our true length line B4 on our point B. Let's grab an arc back to our plot graph so the true length line of A4 set that onto the compass so from point A where the two lines intersect that gives us our point four. I haven't slightly made the arc long enough so that it intersects, so I just go back, reiterate the, the size. And that is now our point four. So we can draw that in. So next we're going to do the shorter side of the pattern. So now we need to find where B5 is. So we do the true length line of B5. On point 5, describe an arc. So the distance from 4 to 5 is there. So we set our small compass which we can use over and over because each one of these segments should be exactly the same. put our compass on point four and where it intersects on our B5 true length line gives us point five. So next we find B6, true length line of B6. B6 
some B. Let's grab the arc. Small compass. 1.5. gives us B6. No small mistake, we haven't done the true length line of B7, which is why it's always good to mark and identify everything with numbers and letters, so you don't lose track. So we we'll work the true length line of B7 out. Set on our compass, on point B, describe an arc, small compass 6, which then gives us our point 7. So next we need to find BE and then E7. So we know the length of BE because it's in the flat plane. So it is literally just half of a side. Set our compass for that. On point B. Scribe over on the side. So E is, is the intersection between that arc coming back down from 7E. So 7E, because it's on the side, 7E is actually the full height. So the true length line, because it's a vertical plane, we know the height. On point 7, coming back down. where that intersects gives us point E. So now we can draw the short side of the pattern. with all our fold lines. Then we freehand the top complete one side. So now moving on to the other side we do exactly the same thing. So we're trying to find point three. So the true length line of A3, describe our arc, using our setting on the small compass, which is the same division as all of them. We then put that on our point four, where that intersects, that gives us our point three. Same again, finding point two, so A2, true length line of the fold of A2. Three to two gives us our point. So 
we just replicate exactly what we did on the other side finding A1 true length line of A1 Gives us point one. So A to D. Cross reference with D to one. So that's the true length line of one to D down off our point one describe our arc and the intersection then is the length of A to D which is in the flat plane so we know the length of that is half the pattern Point A, where that intersects, gives us our point D. Then we complete our pattern. So a quick way just to check that A, D and 1 are correct is that it should be square. So the angle from A to D to 1 should be 90 degrees. If you've made an error along the way, that angle will be slightly out. Or it could be a long way out. But if it's 90 degrees, rule of thumb is you've done it right. Finally, freehand the top. that completes our offset square to round pattern. I hope you found this informative so have a go. We'll put a link on the end for our concentric square to round so if you've not seen that go and have a look at that and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.